probably fucking starving. Mm -hmm. Starving. I kept talking about food around him because I wanted him to eat. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Geekverse. I am Phil. And I am Zach. And guess what, Zach? I am so glad to be back. How are you? Uh, man, I'm happy to have you back. Tyler's not here this week. He's out uh, venturing off. It is his birth, well, pre-birthday weekend, so he's up north. And it, he just left us, us two. Oh. So cool. it's going to be fun. We're going to be doing uh, a back-to-back filming today. Uh, mm-hmm. One about the topics, and then the next podcast will be more of a, like, kind of just a fun thing that I thought we should do to get the audience to know us a little bit better. Yeah. Since we're getting a little bit, you know, I want people to understand who 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 you are, you know. They know who yeah. I am, but That's I fair. think they deserve to know a little bit more about you, but I think this will be a fun day. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of games to review. Yes, we do. Uh we got Space Marine 2, we got Astrobot, we got Dead Rising Remastered <laughs> review, which that that code came out of nowhere. I didn't yeah. think we got approved for Doctor, it. Doctor Doctor yeah, and then also I'm going to be reviewing this movie called Rule of Thirds. We're going to talk about the Mickey 17 trailer. I don't think you watched it, but... I, uh, I watched... I actually watched oh, it. Oh, you did? Yeah, cool. it's like about... Yeah, so we'll that'll be fun it. to talk about it. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Agatha all along. I don't care if you watched it, but I, I thought it was going to be have be more of a fun conversation to talk about what MCU mm-hmm. character should get a spinoff and what shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll take some viewer questions at the end. But with every end of the Geekverse, I like to ramble. I like mm-hmm. to kind of just discuss a little bit. So, Phil, do you like peanut butter or jelly more? That's a tough one. I'm a, I think I'm a peanut butter fan. Yeah? yeah? Like, what is your favorite thing about peanut butter? Do you like a creamy? Do you like crunchy? Like, I'm, I'm crunchy, but I think it's like about peanut butter. You could just have it with like a lot of things. Yeah, like so what's like your a, favorite thing to have it with? Like, do you uh, like just PB&J or do you like it on your toast? Or I'll do like my shakes. I'll put like a huge thing of peanut butter with like my protein shakes oh, okay. and like make like a big old way like smoothie in a way. Okay. I dig so. that. I dig that. Okay. All right. Also like a lot of the like the the Nutri-Grain bars and like all those kind of like snack bars mm-hmm. usually have peanut butter in them. So hey, that's man. why. I dig it. I yeah. dig it. But uh, okay. Thank you for answering my question. Do you have anything for me? Hmm. What about you? Do you like peanut butter or jelly? Uh, peanut butter. Like hardcore. You know what I had for the first time, like speaking about this is like not for the first time, but like I remember when I had Nutella for the first time in my life because mm-hmm. my mom's allergic to it. So I've n- it was never allowed in our household. So uh, I remember when I had it for the first time, I'm like, this is game changing. This should be on fucking everything. Yeah. Do you like Nutella? Nutella is pretty good. I mean, like if I buy it, I'll probably use all of it. But yeah, I just I never had the urge to be like, oh, I need Nutella. What's like your urge thing? Like it has to be in the house at all times. I have to have like, I've been really liking these. Uh, they're called like flaxseed brownies. So they're you lost me at the flaxseed. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> it's like a chocolate brownie. Yeah. They're like really cute. They're about like this big. They taste like a brownie, but they're not really a brownie. They're like good for you kind of deal. Okay. Or like as good as you can get for yourself. Okay. And it's just like a really nice sweet treat. Oh. Yeah, no. Nah. I, I, I think I would rather just have a brownie. Yeah. Not flaxseed. Yeah. You I think that more would of re- a controversial question. What? You are you much more of a milk drinker? No, I hate milk. Really? I, I, I I'll drink like protein milk and stuff, but like I don't I will never actually do you know how weird I am? My wife thinks I'm the weirdest. I do not eat cereal with milk in it. I've really? never I've never had it. I tried it again because my wife eats cereal all the time. So I tried it again because I'm like, let me see what all the fuss about. And I just, I hate it. I I literally hate milk in there because it just makes it soggy eventually. And it feels like I have to eat it fast. I fucking hate it. So you just eat cereal dry? Yes. Like an animal. Yeah. Like kibble. (laughs) Basically. (laughs) Oh yeah. Basically basically like kibble. 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 Yeah. So I'm like basically a dog. (laughs) That's fair. I love milk. I'll have really? it with like anything. Really? Yeah. Like dinners. I'll have it with like spaghetti. I'll have it What? With dude, that's wild. Enchiladas. I'll nah, have it. dude. That's fucking wild. With spaghetti? Yes. Yeah, no, man. With a nice good no, dude. 
Nah, dude. Do you know what's funny though? This um, this firefighter that used to be like a server at like one of the restaurants that like my parents went to all the time mm-hmm. when I was younger. I remember when I was in cross country and track, he was on this diet, and uh, his diet, I shit you not, it was milk and water. That's all he could drink all day. Ew. And an uncrustable, or like a PB and J sandwich. That doesn't sound like a healthy diet. It. That mean the man was buff as fuck. Not not and not like steroid wise. Like he just like he was a good like very healthy looking guy. That's crazy. Yeah. So I actually did it for a little bit, like for cross country and track, and I did get more cut and everything. Like that was basically all I did for like six months, and that was probably the best I ever looked. That's crazy. Yeah. Just drinking milk and just having a peanut butter and jelly a day. Yeah. Not not like once a day. Like that's all he could consume. If he was hungry, he had to eat something like that. Oh. Yeah. That's crazy. I did it for four months. I, I definitely, I'll tell you right now though, I did not want milk afterwards and I did not want Uncrustables ever, ever again. Wow. That's crazy. And then I don't think I ate Uncrustables till like maybe two years ago again. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, like, didn't you just buy Uncrustables when we went to San Diego? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're, like, easy snacks and yeah. stuff like that, you know? They're a little bit more filling, too. Yeah. But, man, nah, it's fucking wild. Like, the the amount of diets. I, I'm going to I'm gonna call out my coworker and my friend right now, Jacob. So, he does, like, all these crazy diets, and he just did this one that was all he would drink is chicken broth. That's all he would consume, like, three times a day, a certain amount. This motherfucker looked so sick after the second day. Like he like I legitimately thought he was sick, but he's not sick. He was just probably fucking starving. Mm-hmm. Starving. I kept talking about food around him because I wanted him to eat. <laughs> Like Fact, that's so mean. No, it's not. He needs to fucking eat, dude. That's fuck, fair. fuck your diet. Like yeah, I, that diet ain't making you look good. Like nah, dude. It's nah. making you look a fucking. Maybe death. you need to tell him about your milk and peanut butter. And I stuff like I actually did because he does eat an uncrustable like once a day now at work, mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah, see, you, you should do my diet. You know, it's a fancy ass diet. I wonder how that guy's going. What if I find out he like is constipated? Because you know how like Elvis would eat like PB and J all the time too, and apparently he like died from constipation. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. What if like he died and I just don't know about it? Oh wow! I mean, who knows? It's pretty. What's the worst way you'd want to die? I think drowning. Drowning? Yeah. Like specifically in a pool and a beach. Um. I just like think general drowning. I, I don't think it matters anywhere. Okay. Just drowning. I, mean, I think. So- Drowning in a sewer would be worse than drowning in a pool, but how? Like, are you drowning because you got like a Charlie horse and you can't swim, or are you like, drowning because someone's making you? Like, someone's forcing your head underwater. I think that would. I think it just doesn't matter. I think just like the. Do you remember when Bruce underwater? Willis died in glass from being drowned in a puddle in the in the street? Oh yeah, that was so fucking stupid. I like that movie, but that was so stupid. Yeah, because he was like, what is it? He was invincible, right? Except to water. That's, yeah. Which I don't mind the water thing. But now thinking about that, like, M. Night Shyamalan has a lot of, like, water things. That, and then, did you ever see Signs? Yeah. The aliens were not invincible to water. Oh, yeah, that's right, to burn them, right? So that's two water things. I'm, like, trying to think if he has any others. Is there any other, other know, things? Avatar? He's not Avatar. That's James Cameron. No, I mean... No, like, uh, I'm just talking about M Night Shot. Oh, I get. Oh yeah, yeah. Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yeah, I don't think about that movie, but yes, water bending. <laughs> that movie sucks. I've never finished it. I've never, never finished. finished it? I've never finished that movie. I don't That's think crazy. I ever will. Have you? Mm-mm. I never even started it. Oh, okay. So I like how that comes to your head, but you've never seen it. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Let's get into the news topics, man. All right, so. Well, news, news and reviews. So this is Geeked Up section. We're going to review some things, talk about movies. And to make it more, we're going to start with games, jump into the movies. We got nothing to talk about TV because the TV topic is the main topic, the hot mic, which is Agatha. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to start with Astrobot real fast. Go for it. So I've finished Astrobot. I'm almost about to platinum it. I have four more trophies to get. And overall, I think this is my favorite game of the year. 
Um, oh, really? I am still just blown away by the amount of fun. I never feel pissed at it. Like even when the levels get really, really challenging, they do these challenge levels in every single area. And I mean, sometimes they are hard and they'll take me about like 30, 40 minutes to beat because you only get one life through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And, but it's just that dedication. I have to save that bot. Like I just got a Chris Redfield the other day oh, and it cool. was so cool. I love this game. Me and my wife can play like for three, four hours at a time and just like time just flies by. It's so simple, but so joyful. And it just takes me back to my childhood when you would like pop Jack and Daxter in for the first time, the very first one. And you'd go around looking for all the orbs and things mm -hmm. like that. Just like the simplicity of that and the level design. Or even if you're jumping into Crash Bandicoot or Spyro or a Ratchet and Clank. Like, and I'm not talking about the later installments. I'm talking about the first one for all of those. Yeah. It's a great love letter to each and every one of those games that I don't think we get enough of nowadays. Banjo and Kazooie is another one. I just... There's something special to Astrobot that on the surface is in a way, yes, like marketing for all of PlayStation's history, but in a way it's a love letter to PlayStation's history. It's a love letter to their to all their IP for the most part. Um, there's some bots that are missing that are like weird misses, like there's no sweet tooth, and that, that's a little bit weird. But someone found him in the data file, so I assume he'll be the DLC bots because they've said that they're doing DLC levels. Oh, that's cool. um, there's no resistance, which is a little weird to me. But there's like kill zone, and oh. like it's cool to see kill zone represented. It's cool to see medieval represented, Resident Evil represented even katamari remember katamari the ball pushing thing mm -hmm. that's represented the game you can get a bot that pushes around a ball um and the coolest thing about this is every time you finish one of these areas it takes you to the last world is always one of the main video games so the first area is ape escape the second one was god of war where you get his leviathan axe and that's you get, cool. and then uh ape escape you get the the net to mm -hmm. catch monkeys the third one's uncharted Oh, and you get his gun and it feels like an uncharted level and it's so joyful. I, we played through that level twice because of how fun it was and it's always feels rewarding to get to the end of these and there's, there's other levels and I'll leave them at that, but I can't imagine like this game is again so simple, but I love it so much and I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Oh, I have no issues with it after beating it. Um, I'm going back and forth with this or Final Fantasy is my favorite game of the year so far, mm -hmm. but I think this might take the cake. I think this might take the cake, and it's it's just it's fucking amazing, man. It's amazing. I can't recommend this game enough. You know what? Um, now that you mention, there's one word that really stuck out to me is simplicity. Mm -hmm. And as we're kind of talking about these other two games too, I think that's kind of the main topic of this. It's simplicity. And it's kind of crazy because now we've grown up with these IPs forever, right? Yeah. The I feel like it would be um, it would be too critiqued if like games really do take that step back and go back to literally the first like like you said, Jack and Daxter, yeah. where they didn't even have guns and no. it was just a straight platformer, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's crazy that we will never see, like, such simple things unless it's exactly. from a new IP. Yeah. And even now, again, like, new IPs these days, they more try to t grab on to, like, either a trending gameplay mechanic or a gameplay loop life service or they shooters, yep. grab something that is niche and slightly unique yep but it will kind of die out yeah so it's it's interesting to hear about this word simplicity in a way because it's like we don't really get that anymore with games no not, not at all games are like and i think that's why i like astrobot so much is because i can pop it in i can play it and i barely have to I have to think, obviously, but you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't have to pay attention to some world-breaking story, which, don't get me wrong, story games are always going to be my yeah. bread and butter. That's my favorite thing to always entertain, but it was so... It's fun. Like, yeah. honestly, and if you ask me my one issue, I wish it was co-op. That's the only thing I think that was lacking in the game is not having co-op or some sort of co-op mode. Like, me mm -hmm. and my wife would just switch off playing each level, but... I think a co-op, like if they were to do a sequel, which I would be pretty surprised if they didn't, like the, mm -hmm. you can't find this game physically at any store, like 
I don't know if that's just because they weren't prepared for all the love it was going to get. It's getting a bunch of great reviews. Like this feels for me the game that you would probably launch with your PlayStation Six. Like one of the few games. Like yeah. they tried doing it with Knack, and Knack was simple, but tried to do the story thing too. But and I played both Knack games. They're fine. They were whatever, but they're not memorable. To think about it, I don't think Knack has represented an Astrobot. I don't think it is. <laughs> I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But um, but yeah, like for me, like every level was endlessly joyful. And one more thing to shout out, the music. The music is so good. Sometimes I just sit there and I would just listen to it. Do you, uh, I am hope or like I'm guessing that when you go to the, each of these worlds where it's like different games and everything do they like do yeah. their own kind of uncharted you get uncharted's music god of war you get god of war's music in there that's cool but it's synced with astrobot's theme so gotcha. every level has basically the same theme but in a different variety gotcha which is one of my favorite things for the game so i loved it i genuinely i play all the nintendo platformers this is the best platformer of this generation that's of good. the eh, of this decade of gaming right now, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation Five, uh, Xbox Series X, this is the best platformer. Mm -hmm. I always give them a shot. I really liked Super Mario Odyssey. I liked a couple of the other Mario games like Super Mario Wonder. Super Mario Odyssey was cool and I liked it, but Astrobot had just something different. And again, it was that simple, that mm -hmm. simplicity that won me back over. And it reminds me of Super Mario Galaxy, which I think yeah. a lot of people hail as the best Mario game ever made. So take it as that. So, yeah, man, let's jump uh, now Space Marine. That's right. Which came out earlier in September, and if you don't know what Space Marine is, well, it takes place in the Warhammer 40K world. It's a third-person shooter hack-and-slash video game developed by Saber Interactive and published by Focus Entertainment. This is, of course, the sequel to Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2011. You don't have to play that game. Trust me, you don't. Yeah, you don't. If you want to read up the lore, because like, even if you have played it, which I have, there's so much time in between the first and the second game that all the shit in between was like bolt gun and stuff. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that Warhammer game, which I have, I played, I never beat, Yeah, but bolt it's just, gun is actually pretty fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. But uh Warhammer as, as Phil mentioned simplicity, mm -hmm. it's a very simple game that Phil, I'm going to be honest with you. When I started playing it, I wasn't, I wasn't digging it. Really? I, I was not, engaged with it as much um and i kind of felt i was like what is wrong with me and i didn't know if it was just because i bought astrobot the same day uh, so i didn't know if it was like i just want to keep going back and playing astrobot eventually warhammer did win me over mm -hmm. but it felt simple and that was maybe not something that i anticipated but yeah i was gonna say um when i first started it i was just amazed by how the world looked how it felt. Yeah. Um, it does look really good. The graphics are incredible. Yeah. And it kind of brought me back to this time where when I used to play like the old Halo games, like one through three, right? Mm -hmm. I always made it like an objective to like always keep my my Marines alive and I always yeah. gave them the best weapons I could. And in this one, when you're a space Marine and you're trotting in through the mud and you get the Cadian guard looking at you and they're like on their knees, like, Oh my goodness, it's the angels. They're here. We got this. There and is something cool to that. There, and not only that too, um, one of the things that like really impressed me is the amount of detail and like the fighting that they do too. Like mm -hmm. usually, uh, I'm not a fan of like, a lot of these massive like horde games because when they have like co-op AI or like uh friendly AI, they just kind of stand there and shoot even in, and then they Call die. Duty, yeah. And even, they actually do some work. Even yeah. the ones that aren't playable do some work. Yeah. I was going to say, um, like old call of duty, like world at war. I remember vividly of like seeing my Marine dudes shooting mm -hmm. and they don't do damage. So they were just shooting and they would, I would see AI just mm -hmm. constant stumbling but in this, I watched a Cadian guard get jumped by, what, what is it, a Tyranid? Yeah, Tyranid. So they get jumped by a Tyranid. I'm like, oh, he's going to get executed. No, he kicks him off. And while he's kicking him off, he's shooting while his butt is on the ground. I'm like, that's cool. That's really cool AI. And like just mm -hmm. the way how the game just makes you feel just strong and you care about these people too. It's just awesome. And it's so violent. It's so brutal. 
And uh, it took me a minute to get used to the control scheme because it's so different on keyboard and mouse. Like right click is instead of like aiming in, it's to hack and slash yeah. and shooting and all that. It's a little bit different. But once I got the hang of it and like the pairing system, it just felt so natural. It is a very, yeah, I do agree. I, I like the control. I, obviously, I played on, you played on PC, I played on console. Um, but I, I overall really like the feel of the game. And and, mm. and that wasn't like the thing. I think I don't know what I was expecting because I hadn't played the original one since fucking 2012 or something like that. That was like my yeah. introduction to Warhammer. And I don't know what I was expecting, to be honest, going into this. I, I'm curious. Oh, well, we'll get to the scores towards the end, but I'm very curious to hear what your score is because the game is really fun and it's amazing like in terms of like its spectacle. Because each of the levels, which, let me say this, there's five missions for the story, which you might be like, seriously, five missions? Those missions are like fucking hours long. Yeah. <laughs> like, not an hour, like two to three. I think the final mission, did you beat the campaign? Yeah. The final mission is almost three to four hours long. It's fucking long. Yeah, it's and really it's long. And it's epic game. as shit. Like, and that's the one thing I will say is that every, like just speaking about the online, it's or the story itself, every mission while you're basically doing the same thing, go here, destroy swarm. You know what I mean? You're, yeah. it's the same shit over and over. There is a little bit of variety in terms of what you're like, where you're doing it at. And it's always huge in spectacle. Like mm-hmm. I always took a glimmer to just look around. I'm not saying a ton of explosions or a ton of people, but like, did you see off into the Vista, like the spaces, mm-hmm. even in the final mission where you see that thing floating and you just oh, see yeah. all the lasers. I'm like, that is fucking sick. It's yeah, amazing it's, what they were able to develop. Just the world building itself is just so cool. Mm-hmm. And like, I'll tell you, I don't know what the fuck was going on in the story. Not because <laughs> they did a bad job explaining it. I had just have I, Warhammer's has so much shit to it. Yeah, that there's just a lot going on. You could tell that these guys like knew their their kn- shit. Yeah, they knew their stuff, and it was really cool to just throw you in and not necessarily like hold your hand but it's like here's this roller coaster here's these awesome set pieces and have fun and just go and that and that's all it was like this isn't the which i think this is where it the story did not lock me in i'll be honest other than titus i don't really know the other characters names yeah i don't really know what the fuck was going on for some of it and sometimes i just zoned out I was just having fun along for the ride. Mm. Um, and I think if they were to do a third one, which I think after the success of this one, I wouldn't be surprised if they did a third one oh, yeah. quicker than the first one. Um, mm-hmm. I hope so too. And if they do, I would like to see a better story. One that can get me emotionally caring about mm. these characters. That's the only thing I would say. I think out of all of my issues with the game, it is that one thing that holds it back. Is the, And I get it. Some Warhammer fans will be like, well, it's not for the story, but y- you need a better story. You you need to make people care about your characters. And mm-hmm. for me, I didn't give a fuck who lived or died, personally. Yeah. So I mean, like, Gadriel and uh, Charon, I think that's how you say his name. The, they're great side characters. Um, obviously, they had, like, that new kind of dynamic of, like, yeah who really is our captain, right? Yeah. And who's this person that's taking us in, on these missions? Why is he not only... Which, like, the backstory on Titus is cool, too. Like, mm-hmm. I, that opening mission, I knew it was Titus that you were yeah. playing as, but that opening mission is a cool tutorial mission because it's like, you're in the, what, the Death Watch? The Death Watch, yeah. I think? And you're basically handling all this shit on your own. Like, you're killing, like, all those swarms, and it amazes me. Like, you kill, you attack these things for 10 minutes long, But when you see them coming at you, you're like, how the fuck am I going to kill all those? Yeah. And after you do kill them all, you kind of believe that you did. You actually did kill them, which is it didn't feel unrealistic or anything. Yeah. um, What was it? Uh, A good example of that is the game that's like another game that comes to my mind that makes you feel that way is uh, World War Z. It's from the same developers, too. Yeah, so. so it's like that whole wall climbing mechanic and everything and all that and just clearing out just massive hordes. Like, they, they kind of had that down, which exactly. really cool. And then I like how it's like once you get used to the swarms, you're like, oh, I can take these on. Then they add in the heretics. 
and mm. then they jump in and then which to be honest with you i think killing a heretic was a lot easier than killing like the bigger s- tyranids and shit like that sometimes yeah, like, so, like i would rather have taken on a heretic sometimes than the other ones yeah i uh the only thing that i didn't like was uh their chaos i don't know what faction they're from uh, i think they're not say much. They're from that one like clock guy. No I, fucking idea. I'm so bad at four forty K lore. But the the chaos dudes, the only ones that I really had problems with were the ones with the shields. Oh, see, yeah, I can get that. Because they were beefier than like the normal yeah. like chaos infantry mm-hmm. dudes. And they were just like Yeah. They just blocked all your bullets mm-hmm. and I was like, but really? I think again our whole conversation circles back to simplicity. Yeah. It's not that deep into you have your execution, you have your melee, your hack and slash, your shooting. There's no cover fire. It's just that. And, well, no cover fire. You can hide behind cover, but you can't lock onto it like Gears of yeah. War. Um, but I Executions, executions heal, you. heal you. And and that's my thing is it's a not a grind. What's, what's the word? Um, it's like when you do something repetitively and you keep doing it. Uh, the play style, I, I guess I'll say the play style is engaging. To where mm-hmm. I loved seeing the executions. I loved when the little blue icon would pop up and one of the Tyranids were coming at me and it's like I'm shooting like uh, I just meleeed someone and did the boom, the one shot. Oh, yeah. And then something from over here comes and I just grab it and just and squish then... its head and then just throw it down to the ground and do it again. You know, seeing your character do those badass things mm-hmm. does make you excited to see what's coming next. And I think overall... That is the thing that hooked me into this game was that simplicity and also the fact that it comes with two other modes. A PvE mode, which I think operations I have not played enough of because I've been pretty hooked on the multiplayer. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool that those missions are like when Titus is like, I need someone over here. You're that squad that goes to that area. Yeah. And I think that is such a clever idea to show what else is happening in another area that it adds more to not just the story itself, but the game. Yeah. And then you have multiplayer with three different modes. And I'm overall, I know there's a battle pass. I have not bought it, but I'm curious to see how they uh, support the game. Mm-hmm. In multiplayer, is there going to be different modes? Is there going to be, like, what is there? As well as the PvE stuff, like, what do they add to the operations? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, so as far as, like, operations go, they do follow and give you, like, that context to the yeah. situation, right? Mm-hmm. But what's really cool about the operations is that you could choose, that's where you get to choose, like, your PvE class, mm-hmm. and you have different play styles to go to. And it's to. cool how each of them mm-hmm. play differently. But, like, uh, when I played it, played it i'm like level 12 and i'm a heavy gunner so like what's really cool about it is that you can upgrade your tiers of gear and get better sets of gear to do like even more difficult missions or like the replayability on it is actually really awesome and not only that with the customization you're not just like the boys in blue in this yeah you could actually customize your dude to be whatever color you want and speaking of that customization real fast incredible it made me feel like i was painting and i've never attempted it i probably never will because i do not have the hand-eye coordination to paint Mm. those fucking little figures shout out to anyone who does it felt like i was painting one it's multiplayer same thing i i spent probably an hour going through each class you know customizing both of them the heretic version and the 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 good version (laughs) whatever Mm -hmm. the fuck it's called and I, it, it like it, it intrigued the shit out of me to the point then when I went to PVE and I'm like, oh my God, I have to fucking do this all over again. I spent another hour, you know, painting them. Yeah, I was going to say uh, one thing that's really cool is that because of the way how the IP is, you uh, they made it so that way you could actually like choose the same color scheme yep. from whatever chapter of like space marines yep. that you actually like so like my heavy gunner i made him completely as like a salamander that's and cool it's just like it's cool and not only that because of the way they did that too what i see a lot more that i haven't seen really since like halo reach is like people posting and like talking about yeah. like their favorite faction and making them like their favorite character and i could see that people make their marines their own 
Well, and the customi- I just, yeah, the customization's like, out there. These guys are doing this awesome customization and having a blast. And guess what? They didn't even have to spend any cash doing so. No. And, it's and, it, like, and that's what I really like. I saw someone made a Buzz Lightyear. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, my goal is to do that because that's so fucking sick. All, most of mine I do is uh, almost all black mm-hmm. with a red arm. Or like I'll do a red arm, a red shoulder pad over here, and then like a red leg. Like mm-hmm. I just like the vibrancy of those colors. But then like I have one that's all my shield one is all white with like gold etchings, and then like that's cool. one black thing. And it's just like I get why people like painting the figures because it's the same thing that you're doing in the game. Yeah. So um, PVE is good. Yeah. The multiplayer is very simple. It's very, very simple. Mm-hmm. But it takes me back to the days of playing the original Gears of War and Gears of War 2. And I'm not going to lie. The first time I played multiplayer, I'm like, this is fucking stupid. I don't understand it. I don't. Then I watched one video on tips. And that next game I played, I went 15-1. and one. That's crazy. I went fucking off. And I love playing the multiplayer. I love choosing different classes. Um, I The three I use the most is the jetpack one. Mm-hmm. The harpoon one. And I love the sniper. I love the sniper and getting mm-hmm. headshots. Um, it's a lot of fun. So Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I only got to do like two matches when I first started it. Um, I played the heavy gunner and I did the sniper. Yeah. But I think I'm a fan of like the, the tactical, which is like the standard. Um, yeah, that one's cool too. I like the tactical when I got to play as him. Yeah. So I, I think the PVP is actually in a great spot because it's like it's so simple, right? You can just hop in and play it. You don't have to think. Yeah. Like you, you, There's strategy to it, but when I say don't think, you don't have to be like, I have to do this challenge. Oh, you don't, God, I and have also, to do too, this. it's like it's not crazy sweaty either. Not yet, and I hope not it never yet. gets it, to that. Yeah, I, if, like the there's still a lot of fun, and like the uh, fun hasn't been optimized out yet. And exactly, I hope it stays but like that. I, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think it's skill based skill based matchmaking, which I think is a massive piece of keeping that sweaty aspect out. Mm-hmm. And that's like the one reason that like as as excited as I am for Black Ops Six, if they took that out, I'd be even more excited because I think that is the one thing that ruins online gaming now is skill-based matchmaking. But Space Marine 2, man, what are you going to give it for your score? For me, yeah, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. I, wow. It's a game that I think... Favorite like, game of the year? Yeah, I think so. It's one of my contenders for game of the year. I'm waiting for Stalker 2. That's going to be... That's going to be the... I'm going to tell you right now, I I don't think... I think you're going to like Stalker. I don't think it'll be your game of the year. I think this is your definitive one. Yeah, it's just... It's so crazy how fun it is, man. Yeah, like, it's a I lot of fun. And the world and just the way how the game feels mm-hmm. and makes you feel is just so great. And I agree. I I think if you have like a high-end machine, I think it's still a great showcase of like what graphics and how a world can look. And it looks pretty and it plays amazing. Awesome. So, um the more I talked about it, the higher. So when we came into this room, obviously for people who don't know, we skipped the seven. We we are mm. one through ten. Skip the seven because sevens are too good or too easy. Right? Too safe. Too safe. Um, and I'm not gonna lie. When I first started playing this game, I was at a six out of ten, and then I just kept playing more and more and more, and I kept liking it more and more and more. Mm. So when I came into this room, I was at an eight out of ten. Then as we started talking, I was at an eight point five out of ten. I think I'm at a nine. And then- I, I I really enjoy it. I wish the story was stronger personally. And I on consoles I've had a lot of server issues. Oh. So there's a reason I haven't played a lot of the PvE. Gotcha. And um same with even the multiplayer. As much as I've want like there are times where I'll hop on and I can't get into a fucking game. Yeah. Um so there's like certain and it's not my internet. Because if I can hop on Fortnite or Call of Duty and instantly get into a fucking match, mm-hmm. there's no issues. So it's those little things that hold me back from going a 10 out of 10, but I, I really like this game and it's a fucking blast. Yeah. And yeah, I can't wait. You said game of the, we were talking about game of the year. Did you see the dragon age previews? I I've seen only, uh, I, what was it? I was on like the steam page yeah. and they put it like a 20 minute walkthrough or whatever. And I watched that on like the steam page and mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, okay. Just so people got to play the first seven hours. Oh, Phil, this, 
like every preview I watched was like, this is the best fucking game like really? for fantasy in a while. Well, other than Baldur's Gate. Yeah. What this looks like to me, and I never beat Baldur's Gate. I never got super into it, mostly because I suck at turn-based games. Mm. This is Baldur's Gate without the fucking turn base, basically. Gotcha. It really seems like Bioware took the last 10 years and said, okay, you you guys shit on us for Andromeda and what's the other one they did? The Iron Man type fucking thing. Uh, Anthem. Anthem, which Anthem had really good gameplay but fucking sucked overall. This is their comeback. I, I was blown away watching everything I saw. I can't wait. But Space Marine 2, amazing. Uh, definitely go pick it up if you haven't yet. It's like 60 mm-hmm. bucks or 70 bucks. 60 bucks on PC, I think 70 on yeah. consoles. Uh, last game to review, Dead Rising, the Deluxe Remaster. Now, this is the dumbest title for a game. They should have just called it. Doctor it, Doctor. Stop it. <laughs> it's in the uh, it's in the Resident Evil engine. Um, and as a point of reference, me and Phil have both beaten the game. <laughs> yes, we know it just came out. Thank you to Capcom for sending us over the code as well. But uh, Thank you, Capcom. Um, but... I I was very interested in this remake because when it was announced, I was like, oh, that's cool. That's the one that you should remake. But then like mm-hmm. they just said like a remaster. And I'm like, well, you guys kind of just did one. Like how big of a change is this? And then you see the trailer and you're like, oh, this looks a lot, mm-hmm. a lot better. Um, It still plays the same though. Like yeah. it runs better. It plays better. It's still at its core, the exact same game. Mm -hmm. there's minor changes to it like we discussed like certain things like the perverted stuff um the vietnam stuff is gone uh and a couple other small changes Mm -hmm. but for the most part it's a quality of life improvement yeah but i will tell you this phil i still like and i never thought i'd say this in a million years i still think the original is better really yeah, even though this one runs like if someone were to come to I I would which is hypocritical for me to say this, I would play this over the original now just cuz now I've played it. Mm-hmm. But there was something and again this might be nostalgia from the first time cuz that was my first 360 game was that yeah. original Dead Rising game. And it blew my mind and maybe I'm have rose tinted glasses from when I played it cuz I I fucking hated the game. The game was hard. But there was something about it that just like was like what the fuck is this? Like, it felt like the zombie hordes were bigger and they probably weren't. You know what? Uh, That was one thing that was in my mind too, is uh, I'm like, when you go to uh, paradise Plaza for the first time, yeah, I was like, shouldn't there be more? (laughs) Which given as the game goes on, there is a lot more, but even in the maintenance tunnels, like how many kills did you get through your playthrough? I think I only ended up with like 3,500 or something. Holy shit. I only hit 5,000. I only hit like 5,878. That's crazy. And I was trying. Mm -hmm. That's what, but like, I remember when I first played the original, I did hit that 53 a lot faster. Yeah. It's, um, it definitely feels like they, they like lowered the zombie count in some areas. Yeah. There's not as many. I don't know what the... Uh, the and again, we could be wrong, guys. We yeah. could be wrong. Like, this could no, be nostalgia to a 100% degree. It could be totally nostalgia. If we're wrong, just, I don't know. Comment and let yeah. us know. Yeah. But, like, in the maintenance tunnel, like you said, in the 360 version, I don't think there was ever, like, a spot where it was, like, open. And, and there was a walk. lot of opening. Like, I remember you had to drive through there or back walk on the zombies. But mm. um, we're getting too far ahead of ourselves. Let's start with the pros about what's really good about this remaster. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of that is graphics. Uh, graphics are actually pretty good. Everyone's the new models, I actually think, look pretty solid. Yeah. And I know a lot of people have shit on Frank West's model, but I actually kind of dig it. I'm not against it. I don't like the way he looks. I, I, I like kind of do. He looks. Look. I like. I like him how sle- sleazy he looks and shit like I, that. When I did my playthrough, though, um, I was debating on doing like the 2006 version yeah. that they had, but I did see that they had a uh, Chris Redfield. Okay, you, I stars. used the Chris Redfield yeah. one as well. Fuck like, yeah! I think it actually some of the costumes or like some of the looks changes his physique. In yeah, a way. the the Chris Redfield one for some reason felt the best i tried running with the uh what's the guy's name from resident evil the nemesis is it nemesis the 
Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. From Resident Evil 3. Yeah. (laughs) But the cutscenes bugged the shit out of me. So I I just, I couldn't do it. But yeah, I ran with the Chris Redfield. um, But I actually don't mind. Also, the voice acting was pretty good for him. I know there was a lot of controversy that people were like, I hate that they changed the voice actor. And what? They've changed it like three times now, right? This is like the third or fourth uh, time they've changed it. I think it's the third. Yeah. I will say nothing will ever beat the original for me. I still like the original voice actor the most. Mm -hmm. But I've just through like three different iterations now of this voice, they all kind of appeal the same to me (laughs) at this point. So I was going to say like, I don't, um, I do think like the original is just better, but it's because like it captured that magic in a bottle of something that was completely different in that day and age. Which that's the thing is that like jet rising, like I think I could see some people playing this and being like, wow, this is dated. And there are parts of me that were like, yeah, it would have been nice for them to do like a whole overhaul, like Resident Evil 3 or Resident Evil 2 or Resident Evil 4, mm-hmm. where, yeah, it's the same game with a lot of little changes here and there. And in RE4 and RE2's cases, it was for the better. I would have liked if maybe Dead Rising did that. But it really was, we're going to remake. The, that's why it's not called a remake. It's literally called a remaster for a reason. They remastered the game into an RE engine with the same fucking gameplay. The same gameplay loop. Mm-hmm. Better AI, though. Better things here. You can move and shoot. You can move and shoot. Which, to, for the people bitching, yes, you can use the old control scheme if you want. I did not. Yeah. But yeah. I thought that was a nice little thing that they put in there. But, yeah, I mean, it's the same game. Same psychopaths. Same things happen on the same days. The mm-hmm. same modes. You know what's funny? Um, Because I was so bothered about like the whole Survivor thing. Because I'm like, I missed one. Yeah. When I beat it last night, I'm like, who the hell did I miss? And I, I was looking on the wiki yeah. or whatever. And I was using the original Dead Rising wiki from like over a mm-hmm. decade ago. It hasn't been updated, but it was still just true to everything. It, and I was like, oh, okay. It, yeah, it very much is the same thing. I was also going to ask you, like for other pros, the graphics look good. Um, I didn't run into any drops and frames or anything like that. Like no. the game's just smooth as shit. I think it's no. 60 frames. I It ran good. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't remember being like, oh yeah, that's right, I'm playing on yeah. PlayStation. It's going to feel like this. Yeah. You know? So, uh some questions though that I I kind of had with it. Um did you feel that the psychopaths were a little harder to like their health bars were sometimes really strong? Uh, like in Adam the, beginning, the clown, I kept shooting him and I, he would not die. I realized that like they either uh just like how the game used to be. But I don't remember there being like such like different kind of like, cause like Adam, the clown, right. He can block all your shots. Yeah. if He's doing this with like yeah. his chain swords. Right. So there was like a lot of weird gimmicks, especially in the early game where your attack isn't high. Too. Yeah. And they definitely have like this really tanky and spongy feeling. But when I was running through like the second, I was doing my second playthrough last night. I was playing till like 1am. Yeah. Uh, I was just kind of like, oh, I'm literally was just it easier destroying. To, okay, so yeah. it was a little bit easier. I didn't get the start. I tried the um, the infinite mode just to see like if it was kind of the same. Um, it was a little bit different, but it still played through. There was mm-hmm. like a, just quality of life little things in there that I enjoyed. Uh, but yeah, no, like overall, this is a nice thing. I would have liked to have seen them add the combination thing that's added in Dead Rising 2, which is, for me, the best Dead Rising game. Yeah. I don't know about it. Like, Dead Rising 2, I really hope gets... Not this... I hope it gets the treatment, but it's a full-on remake. Because yeah, technically, the... it's never been remade. Um, and honestly, last night, I almost installed Dead Rising 2 again on my Xbox because I have the disc, and I was like, mm. ah, I, might, I might replay. I might actually go home and start it again today. Because uh, I was going to say, I'm like, if Dead Rising 2 gets like the Resident Evil 2 remake treatment, I'd be gushing over that. Same. So bad. Same. Like, and honestly, because uh, I've played all Dead Risings, I've enjoyed them all for the most part, even 4, which 4 is not that great. I wouldn't mind if 3 got it too. I think there's some stuff you could fix with 3. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, yeah, what would you give it? I'm hanging out at like a... Uh, 8.5 to like a nine. Um, there's definitely like some things, um, like, um, 
that are changes that are just like, oh, you know, I like the original, like uh, the voice acting and everything. Like the four, but, the original had like a grit to it that I'm not, that yeah. I don't know what it is with this one that it just doesn't recapture. And again, rose tinted glasses, nostalgia. I can yeah, get it. It I, can be all that. But when it comes down to RE2 and RE4, which I'm not as beloved on, well, RE4, the original I'm beloved on, but mm-hmm. RE2's original, I'm not. It's still retain the grit of the originals you know what i mean like so i don't know if that was the case here like i feel like they could have done a little bit more here um but i I, i'm with you yeah i think they kind of played it safe in some areas and didn't try to like give some kind of treatment yeah to really like they didn't take any risks. No, they made it as simple as possible. Yeah. Going back to the simple thing. So yeah. uh, for me, I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. I think it's a good remaster. If you've never played Dead Rising, this is the definitive way you could play it. You can, like if you were a younger, like, I don't know, because I played the original part when I was like eight, <laughs> which I know, <laughs> not a game. Bad, it's so bad to say, but. <laughs> but like if someone younger today played dead rising this is the version they would play you yeah. don't play the remaster that they did a couple of years back you don't play the original you'd play this because it's a quality of life and i hope this leads into more dead rising yeah uh, whether it's so a too. new game i know they canceled a day of the dead one which i would have been a fan of but i've always liked the core and, that, and that's another thing they just don't make games like this anymore The quirky, like Capcom has that quirky feel to it. Even the newer Resident Evils like lack the quirkiness. And I'm happy the remakes kind of low-key sometimes have them. Mm -hmm. But like Village and Biohazard did not have it at all. No. Um, Which don't get me wrong, I had fun with them. But I miss that quirkiness uh, that Capcom usually has in their games. And it was kind of nice to have it. And it's funny because my wife had never seen Dead Rising and she was making me play or watch me play the new one. And she's like, watch me carrying a survivor on my back with like three other ones following me. And she goes, and she watched me for an hour. She's like, so you just take them back and then you go and do stuff. And then you go back to the security room. I was like, yeah. She's like, kind of boring, isn't it? I was like, you think it would be. And I could mm-hmm. see someone thinking that, but I don't. It's it's fun. I also, um, I feel like I remember there being more psychopaths when I was younger. But yeah. I know they're all the same. Like, no, there's no um, a, no one taken out or anything. I was going to say, there's definitely, like, a different type of pace feeling. I don't know if it's just because when I last played it, I was so young, right? Yeah. But, like, when I fought, like, originally, like, Cliff, I felt like I was near, like, the end game. And in this, like, when I fought Cliff, it felt so early on. Who's and Cliff? He's the he's the veteran that you fight in the hardware house. He's the Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know what's funny? I don't think I ever fought him in the original. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think I ever fought him in the original. I had to go back and like, I was like, was he at it? Yeah. yeah some, sometimes, that, but that original one scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Even, even like, because I went back and played it like five years ago, maybe. I was older. Okay, I was in my 20s. It still scared me. Mm-hmm. So, but this one didn't. So again, like you said, pace, um, the zombies didn't feel as threatening. Yeah. Like when they turned red eye, I remember in that original, I'm like, I am just going to sit in the room and wait till the time advances because I don't (laughs) want to fuck with them. Um, So overall solid eight out of 10 for me. Oh man. I want to said 8.5. Yeah. An 8.5. I do like the AI changes too. Yeah. They they definitely are better. They're still goofy in their own ways. Yeah. For but sure. They're better than what they used to be. For sure. So. Well, let's jump into the, to the last two gaming topics. Uh, these are going to be quick. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Respawn, uh, the, the final game in the Cal Kestis trilogy, is developing one more final game. Um, Phil, are we excited for this? Are we not? I am. Uh, I hope EA gives them enough time to develop the game so they don't release with a shit version. Mm. But um, I really like the first one. I loved the second one, even with its issues. So I'm, I'm for this. What about you? I was going to say... Uh... I definitely think it's going to be with the way how they've been track recording or sorry. Oh my goodness. Their track record. I think they're going to do a good job. I think, uh, mm-hmm. Cal is a pretty cool character. He's awesome. Um, with the way how it plays, mm-hmm. I definitely think I can see a lot more. Did you beat the second one? No, I did not. Okay. Uh, can I get into spoilers or no? You could go ahead. Okay. So by the end of the second one, uh, it seems like they are going to a galaxy very, very far away. So I was going to ask you, do you see 
them killing Cal Kestis off or do they eventually move him into the live action stuff? I think they got to move him to the live action. See, so that's where I'm like, it, it all comes down to what's best for the story. Mm. Because if you bring him into live action, you can't just make him a, a character right off the bat because people who have never played the video game are just going to be like, oh, that's the kid from Shameless. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like that that's what most people will say. I I want to believe that they will eventually do him in live action. I think that would be cool. Um specifically like the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. But you got to get past the original trilogy and this takes place I think a little bit before the A New Hope. So it's like if he's going to a galaxy, does he ever come back? What's going on with that? Does he tie into Ahsoka? You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of things there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm curious, but I'm excited. Uh, last thing, Concord's official budget came out. Oh, I think I saw it. It cost $400 million. Now, apparently this was supposed to be Sony's Star Wars, which on the surface, I, I can see it. I, Me and Phil have said it, that when we play or when we were watching the showcase and we saw the tr- the CGI trailer, we said this looks fun. This mm-hmm. looks really fun. Then we saw it was a hero shooter, and we stopped paying attention. Yeah, we were playing Diablo at that time. Yeah. we were like, "All right, back to Diablo." Yeah, like that was, uh, that was rough. That was really rough. Four hundred million dollars. Now Jim Ryan, who would have been the one that funded this, uh, was kicked out of Sony a while ago. I think it was because of this. I think they probably rolled their eyes at some of their choices. I just don't understand how you think this will be your next Star Wars without a story mode. Because I think if Concord had a story mode that was good with the online, it would have survived. Yeah. It it was just hard. They just try to sell us a bunch of characters and be like, love these guys. Because just love them. But we never really got to know them. And it was smart how they were trying to do like story missions or like story cutscenes with them all. Like that's unique. But do a story mode, and then that's like an addition to it. You know yeah. what I mean? Look at Space Marine. Wow. Who would have thought? So $400 million, fucking insane. That's a lot of money, man. A lot of money. All right. Now it's time to get into the movie segment I'm to stuff. Th- oh. I was going to... No, I'm trying to think, like... I wonder if they release their official sales. I didn't. N- hear they about, they like, never will. They never will. <laughs> I will tell you that right now. They never fucking will. They will. They will never release the sales. Do you know how much a sealed copy of this game is going for, though? Physically, how much? Like three hundred dollars. That's funny. Every time I go to a store, I literally try and find it, and I've seen one in person. They would not sell me it because they're not. They were supposed to take them off the shelf. So. It's all dumb. Anyways, we're going to jump into the movie topics now. Rule of thirds movie review. So Will Hirschfield uh, reached out to me over Instagram and said, hey, um, I would love if you could check out my movie. And I'm going to be honest, I put it off for quite a bit. Um, Some personal things going on in life. I just didn't have time. He asked me around Comic-Con. Me and Phil definitely didn't have fucking time. So I kept putting this off and it's on Prime Video now for free if you have Prime. And I watched it, Phil. And I'm going to be honest, I went into this thinking, oh, it's going to be some low budget, schlocky indie film that I'm I'm not going to be a fan of. Like that, that's what I felt. I'm like, I'm just going to roll my eyes and stuff like this. And Will even like wanted to pay me to watch it. And I said, no, I'm not taking your money, man. Because two things, if I hate your movie, that's not fair to you. That's not fair yeah. to you that you just paid me and I'm not going to, and then I'm going to feel like I'm obligated to tell my audience to go see this. And I'm not going to say this is a must watch, but it's kind of solid. Like, I watched this, and this made me go, indie filmmaking at its best, man. Like, well, maybe not its best, but at its solidness to where I can see the glimmers of greatness that I would be interested to see these performers, specifically Will, because he also stars in this, but also some of the others. So, this is Rule of Thirds is about Monty Ashcroft, a photographer who meets Dakota Thompson, server, during her during a desert shoot instant connection despite her secret their profound bond forms a crux of a story now rule of thirds is kind of like a camera thing so i think that's clever and as i was watching this this is how i know i'm into a movie if i instantly am not playing on my phone you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like i there's many times where i've watched stuff at home and i'm flicking through my phone usually it's on a netflix movie and i don't really give a fuck what i'm watching because it's some cliche romantic fucking comedy that netflix has put out 
But as watching this, I was like, actually paying Engaged. attention. Like I, yeah. and it's really hard for me to watch streaming stuff. I try not to take digital screeners because I know I'm probably going to play on my fucking phone and that's not fair to anyone. So I try to do as less amount as digital screeners because then I know I have all these distractions and for me, what I really was engaged by were the performances in here and how this secret comes about because I didn't see the secret coming. And when the secret hits, I was like, oh shit, that changes a lot of the dynamic of what we've been seeing here. And even if like the movie kind of portrays like uh, Will's character, Monty is kind of an asshole at the start. Um, and there's obviously some things going on in there. I was always kind of intrigued to see where his story was going to go. And it played off in a unique way. Him and Ashley Moore have really good chemistry. I thought the writing was solid, sometimes a little bit cheesy and melodramatic. But I just watched this and I was entertained. And I think sometimes when we go to movies, we don't need it to be the most life-changing event. But sometimes you just want to be entertained mm -hmm. and engaged. And for the most part, Rule of Thirds engaged me. So I'm not going to say, again, it's the best movie ever. But I am going to say that if you're looking for something on Prime Video, that you're interested in watching something that's a little bit more low budget... And maybe something that's not your total cup of tea, but you're like, oh, you know, let me support something that's a little bit smaller base. I would say Rule of Thirds you should watch. So I'm going to give this a C on my rating scale. Out of the 1 through 10, I'd probably give it a 6.5. Um, but I would give it a C overall from my actual grade so, mm -hmm. from movies. Uh, any questions from you? Um, no, not really. Right. I mean, you did. So it's definitely like the whole... Oh. It's definitely like this whole secret thing that kind of envelops this whole story. Yeah, and like this relationship and like what this profound bond that kind of like comes through them. So mm -hmm. again, very simple, but very engaging. And also, I did not mention this. It is very well shot. Like the cinematography for this was really good. Um, and that was part of the piece that actually locked me in because I've watched indie films before and I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? Like, you know, it's, it looks what cheap. What am I looking shit. at? Yeah, like it looks cheap. It looks like something I could have shot on my iPhone and stuff like that. So rule of thirds, check it out if you want. Next up, Mickey 17. Now this stars Robert Pattinson and Mickey 17 is known as an expendable who goes on a dangerous journey to colonize an ice planet. Now this is based off a book called Mickey 7. And the whole basic concept is this guy, he goes on these expendable missions dies and they clone him again but what happens when one of those clones survives uh the trailer came out and this has been one of my most anticipated films since bong joon ho the director of this made parasite and he said this is gonna be my next film robert pattinson is the most intriguing actor to me work right now working in hollywood no matter what he picks up i have to see mm -hmm. i thought this trailer was phenomenal phenomenal what about you phil i thought it looked really cool it was a really good concept um the fact that like, oh, you know, I'll see you next time we'll yeah. die and come back. It's it's definitely got a interesting flavor to it yeah. that like I haven't really seen done in a movie in a while. It's mm -hmm. like uh like you said, it's like it's fun. Yeah, it's it, fun and it looks fun. It's a lot different than I expected because Bong Joon Ho made Parasite, he made Snow Piercer. Of course he also made Okja, but most of the time he's pretty serious. And I have to imagine there is gonna be something serious to Mickey Seventeen that's a little bit different. Um, because the trailer pulls it off as a very comedic but serious yeah. event that happens. Did you ever get to see Parasite? If you didn't, I'm not gonna I actually it. did. And that movie was phenomenal. Yeah, it was a good movie. I liked it. So have you seen Snowpiercer with Chris Evans, the train one? You mean Willy Wonka? <laughs> what? You never seen that uh, theory that Snow Pier uh, Snowpiercer is a like a sequel to Willy Wonka? No, or it's connected. to No, the same but universe? I can really see it happening. But did you like Snowpiercer? Yeah, uh, I have not seen it actually. Oh, okay, you, that movie's amazing. That was the first Bong Joon Ho movie I ever watched, and it blew my mind. Um, but ever since Parasite, which was one of the best films of that year, I was so instantly excited to see what he was going to do next. And Mickey Seventeen, man. I can't wait. Uh, this probably is one of my most anticipated films for 2025. What about you? Are you excited to see this now? Or Yeah, I definitely think it's going to be a fun movie that I can just go to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah okay. I just... No, sorry. I'm <laughs> no, just no, no, you're good. Time. You're good, man. No. No, I dig it. All right. 
Let's get into the hot mic topic. So, like I said, we had no TV to really talk about, but we do have a TV show that just started, and there's a fun topic around it. So, Agatha all along started. It's the spinoff to WandaVision three years later. Uh, I'm not really... I'm a little underwhelmed by the show so far. I've seen four episodes, but I'm not here to review it. Um, You can go check out my review on my channel. Some people are already shitting on me because I'm in the minority. I I had to like it, right? And it's funny because I say underwhelming, but it doesn't mean I hated the series. I enjoyed partially some of it. It just didn't blow my mind. Like I was just underwhelmed because WandaVision was so fucking unique. Did you ever see WandaVision? I actually watched up like half the season. And it was so intriguing. Yeah, it was cool. Agatha... There's intrigue to it, but it never kept me to like, oh, this is like theorizing. Now, again, there's some theories I've been seeing some fans throw around where it's like, oh, this could be this. this." Yeah, but I think it's not that complicated, just like how WandaVision wasn't. WandaVision didn't have Mephisto or any of those things. In the end of the day, WandaVision was a story about grief. Mm-hmm. And that's what it was. So, but I thought the fun topic to talk about was what other MCU characters would we watch a spinoff movie or show of? Because there's so many different MCU characters now that I think deserve their own spinoffs. So, do you have any, Phil, off the top of your head? Honestly, I would like to see um, Kingpin. Like a Kingpin show just directly? Yeah. Ooh. Like I would a like good, that. I think it would be like a good contester to like how like Penguin maybe. Oh Are God. You? Oh God. The Penguin also started and that was amazing. But yeah, no, yeah, I really like, like I that. I think that would be, um, would you want to see like how he kind of rose to power or would you like to see like kind of where like, he's at right now? Not necessarily. I, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of like the origin of like him getting into power, but I like the fact of like, seeing what they're mostly known for and like how they're running the city and how they do their operations. Yeah. Like, I don't think there's enough movies that kind of dwell into that. They're mm-hmm. already kind of established and there's like a conflict with them. Right. Yeah. Or it's just like their origin story and you never really see them taking off. Yeah. And nah, so I think it one. would be um, good to see like how he runs the city and how he wants to do things. And uh, that that would be my and like, could you imagine like, I feel like if you did Kingpin, there would be so many opportunities to have like a very serious cameo of Spider Man or a very serious cameo of Punisher. Yeah. You could have like a very comedic episode where like you're like, holy shit, my guys just got freaking jumped by Spider Man, and then the next episode he had a bunch of bodies at his front door because yeah. Punisher was there, you know? I dig that. So, like, I, I would see, I, I would think, like, a cool dynamic of that. I like that. Uh, going to a next one, a uh, Red Guardian. I'm not saying he needs a film, but I would love a serialized series on all the missions that he ran for Russia. That'd be and cool. And a little bit more of David Harbour. It could be animated, it could be live action, doesn't matter, but I think that would be a cool in-depth into one of the, and it would be funny. It would yeah. probably be really funny too. You could have his wife be a part of it, all that things. Uh, I would, I'd be kind of for that. Um, another character that for some reason I think would be awesome to follow, Eric Killmonger from Black Panther. Um, I would like to see a little bit more of his journey, how he kind of came to be uh, mm-hmm. the person that he was. Um, I think he was killed off way too soon, and I think we deserve more of him. Uh, anyone else for you, Phil? Hmm. Maybe Hawkeye. When well, Hawkeye already in, got one. When his uh, Ronin. See, and that's the one thing. I wish the Hawkeye series touched more on the Ronin stuff. Because that would have been fucking sick. Yeah. It barely touched on it. I just, uh, I feel like a lot of MCU shows can go pretty good if they just kind of like say, hey, this is going to be more adult version. You know, like. Yeah. Not really for kids and just go all, all gas mm-hmm. and just no breaks on it. Yeah, no, I can see that. Um, another one for me, I'm trying to think of like everyone in the MCU. I know there's so many people now. Um, moon. So I love moon Knight, but Lila, the girl, the Scarlet Scarab with him. Um, I would like to see a spinoff of her. I thought she was such a standout in that series. And if everything comes to fruition, her dad would be, I think Bushmonger, I think is his name. And that character is really fucking interesting in the comics. So you can bring him to life in here as well. Oh, uh, anyone else for you? Hmm. I don't know why. Well, 
Uh, I mean, I really liked. Um, it's not MCU like the Jessica Jones and. So Jessica you would want Daredevil. them to come back. I would want them to come back. I would definitely all of like, them. I would not, want Jessica to come back. Well, yeah. acting wise, I don't care if the actors come back, but I wouldn't mind if Jessica Jones spin off like another series of. Her. Yeah, I heard there's there's been rumors that she's coming back. Jessica so. Jones, I think, was like the better one. I didn't really care for Iron Fist. I was like this character i hate it was him. whatever i hated him <laughs> i heard iron fist is some not the actor but iron fist will be showing up somewhere soon wow maybe maybe um another one a uh, man thing from fucking werewolf by night deserves an absolute spinoff man thing werewolf by midnight i've never seen that's that. the horror thing they did on disney plus oh okay. it's fucking amazing it's amazing it's like 40 minutes and it's brutal as shit. It's super dark. It's I'll all in black and white. That. I watched it like seven times the first year it came out. Um, but it's the first introduction to horror in the MCU. You have Elsa mm. Bloodstone. You have the werewolf. You have Man-Thing. Man-Thing is like Swamp Thing, basically. Mm. But I would like a spinoff to see how that character kind of comes to fruition into this world. I think it's just more horror I would like uh, in the MCU. So alongside that... Uh, I think that's it for me. Any other MCU characters that you, that you feel like would be cool to get a spinoff of? Taskmaster. Task. The version Master. they have or a new version? Hmm. I, I guess I wouldn't. I wouldn't care if it was like a new version or if it's the original. Yeah. I just I like the whole idea of his character. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be cool to just kind of see how he really does his thing and just like. His vengeance yeah. is just like his feelings. These technically count now. I have another one. All of the cameos from uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. Gambit, Jennifer Gardner's Electra. I know they've gotten their movies in the past. Well, not Gambit, but I would like to see where'd they go. Dude, Blade, I'm- that version of Blade. Yeah. Uh, that version of Gambit, uh, X-23. What happened to her after Logan? I would like to see that progression. Yeah, it would be cool. Um, I, I love how they like still kept her around at the end of Deadpool and Wolverine. Me too. That's just awesome. she's come she's coming back, man. She's yeah, I know. Come back. They they at least got to give her a cool role. Uh, role. I think she'd be a good character. Yeah. But I I'm killing for a Gambit. I really fell in love with Gambit, especially after the X Men ninety seven show. I'm like, oh my goodness. I think when we get the X Men reboot, like in the MCU when we actually have a new X-Men team, new actors, I I would be pretty shocked if Gambit's not a part of that team, mm-hmm. but it will not be Channing Tatum. Dude. Which, which Channing Tatum did an amazing job, and I would love for him to get a spinoff of that version of him, but I will be honest, I, and people might hate me, I do not want him playing the MCU version. That's just me. I, I do, And same thing, I don't want Hugh Jackman playing the fucking Hugh Wolverine version. Do it, recast, sorry. Finish yeah. them off in Secret Wars. You got to recap these characters. These actors are like 40, 50 years old at this point. <laughs> you, yeah, the, like, they are kind I of want old. these characters around for a while, you know? Yeah. So, all right. We're going to take two viewer questions, Phil. Two viewer questions, all right? And then we're going to end this. Best trilogy of comic book films ever. So, this is like the Dark Knight trilogy. You got um, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Iron Man, Captain America, uh, all those. As of right now, I will say the best trilogy of comic book movies is Guardians of the Galaxy, personally, for me. I know some people will be like, Zack, Dark Knight is the number one. I know. But for me, Guardians hit every single level. It's one of the few trilogies that when you watch it and you go back and watch them, it makes every film better. If the third film can make... Because I wasn't a fan of the second one. I thought the second one was decent. But the fact that now when I go back and rewatch it, it makes it better. I think that's a cool experience. Mm-hmm. What about you? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is definitely up there. It is a tie between Dark Knight and Guardians for okay. me on that. Um, man, I'm trying to think. The, I mean, Spider Man Three. You have the Spider Man trilogy yeah. from Tobey Maguire. Um, for me, I mean, it, there is no definitive. It's like three different trilogies that would mark it. Um, I think, and I will say this: Guardians will not be number one trilogy for me forever, though. There's going to be a trilogy soon that will defeat it, and that'll be across the Spider Verse or into the Spider Verse. Yeah. Once the, if the third film is just good, just good, I mean, it's got, I I would hope it would be great, but if it's just good, 
That'll be the best comic book trilogy ever made. Because yeah. the first film was a masterpiece. The second film's a masterpiece. If the third film's just, oh, that was really good. I mean, you look at the Dark Knight trilogy. Dark Knight's a masterpiece. Batman Begins is really good. And depending on who you are, Dark Knight Rises is either fantastic to you or just okay. Well, you know, it's there. Uh, I also think Robert Pattinson's Batman trilogy will eventually have uh, a thing to that as well. Mm-hmm. So, But uh, thank you for the question. Film Z154 asks, if you could live anywhere in the world and money wasn't an issue, where would you live? Ooh. I definitely would want to live where there's actually four seasons. Okay. I would want to live in either probably Boston, uh huh, Salem, either that or I would go to, I would like to go somewhere in Europe. Okay. I think it'd be cool. Fair enough. Um, for me, I'm going to give the cliche one. Some people will be like, really? Tahiti. No. Uh, California. I'd love to live on the beach. Laguna Beach. That's it. If money wasn't an option and I could live somewhere, that would be there. Because there's a ton of film stuff that happens in California. Disneyland's in California. Universal Studios is in California. It's fucking expensive to live out there, and I love the beach. Mm-hmm. Like, all my favorite things are... Now, yes, it's dirty and... There's a lot of homeless people and sometimes you think you're going to get shot, but I don't know. California is my home state. It's where I was born. If I could go back and live there and not stress about money, I would 1000%. So, but the guys that is into the geek verse episode 12, 12, 12, 12. Sweet. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. This was heavy on video games, but we're going to be back next week wearing the same clothes because me and Phil are doing a doubleheader. We're going to record the next episode right now talking about our favorite games and favorite movies of all time. What do you mean? I just wear these clothes every day. Never shower. <laughs> Have fun, guys. Right. Thank great, you. guys.